Hello and welcome to Fenextra. I'm Emily Hall at Payments UK Cybersecurity and Fraud Seminar and I'm joined by George Quigley of KPMG. Thanks very much, George. How can financial institutions defend themselves against attacks given the potential number of weaknesses? Yeah, now these days it's not possible. So if you went back traditionally or go back historically in time, organisations would try and stop intruders from getting into the networks and that was where they focused most of their time. Unfortunately, we've moved into a new environment now and as you say, it's really impossible for organisations to be able to prevent every single attack that's coming through to them. There's a recognition from the regulators that systems will be breached and the emphasis now has to move to are you able to detect a breach, are you able to respond to that breach and are you able to recover from that breach in a timely manner. So I think it's all about changing focus. We're not saying to clients stop and remove any of the traditional defences that you've got, absolutely not, you should keep those in place, but now we need to build on it to mitigate this threat and we need to look about how we can detect an intruder on our networks, how we're going to respond to them and how we're going to recover our services in a timely manner. Um, and that's quite a challenge for the industry, that's a change in mindset and a change in way of working, but that's really where you've got to. I think anybody who thinks they can defend against absolutely every threat is kidding themselves, it's just not possible going forward. So George, what are the four A's in technology risk and why are they important? Yeah, well, when I first started in this business many, many years ago, we had the acronym CIA. I think a lot of the techie guys thought it was cool. Mm -hmm. And it stood for confidentiality, integrity and availability as it applied to technology risk. And if you think about that, the first element of that, confidentiality, was the key that we talked about. So it's back to the point about keeping people out and only making sure that certain people have access to information. But I think that's an old-fashioned way of looking at it, if I was being honest. And I think we need to now look at the four A's. And the four A's is a, a phenomenon that came out in 2007, and it talks about having four elements to technology risk, which you can use for cyber. The first one is availability. Because if you don't have a system and it's not available these days, then you don't have a business. So the first thing we need to think about as security professionals is the availability of a system. We should then think about the second A, which is access. So how do people get access to our systems? It's not about trying to stop people from getting into our systems, it's about how do we give them the right level of access to whatever it is we want to share with them to run the business. The third one that comes into play, so we've had, um, we've had availability, then we've had access. The third one is accuracy of our data. How do we know that the data that we've got and that we're using is accurate and fit for purpose? And that's the third risk. And the fourth one, which is a real issue for financial services, is agility. How do we create systems that are agile enough to keep going not only with the business we need today, but also the business that we need to do in the future? Uh, and the city has a problem with an awful lot of old legacy systems, uh, and those legacy systems will need to be addressed at some point. So I think cybersecurity professionals and technology risk professionals in general need to start thinking, getting away from confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and thinking much more about availability first, then access to data, then the accuracy of the data that's held, and finally the agility of the systems that allow us to create, uh, continue doing business not just today, but also in the future. And how should a company balance dependency on <coughs> people, process, and technology, and is one more important than another? There's an ongoing debate and argument within the cybersecurity industry about where's the balance between people, process, and technology, and it kind of veers from, oh, it's all technology, and then it's all people, and then it's all back to technology, and then it's all back to people. The truth is that it's all three of those elements, and you have to fit those three elements into your business in the appropriate way. What we say to clients is don't think of them in isolation, think of them together. If you think about them adding up to 100, and that you've got a finite number to work within, you can then think about is the balance 33 and a third in each of those categories for the business I'm doing? or what does the exact number to be. We've seen an awful lot of people that will put 99% of their efforts into the technology and then they're falling over because the people don't really understand what they're doing or the process isn't fit for purpose. And one of the things that's in the industry at the minute, which is not a huge problem, but it's becoming a bigger problem, which is fraud that's been driven on the back of emails. Now, Clients are getting some very sophisticated emails coming into them, uh, addressed, or it looks as if it's coming from the CEO or the CFO, asking somebody in the payments department to transfer an awful lot of money to a bank account. Now, the details within that email are, are current details of a project that perhaps the firm is working on. The tone of the email is written as if it was coming from the CEO. These are very, very clever emails, and people are getting fooled by them, and people are transferring money. 
and one client has lost a significant, a significant amount of money into six figures on this scam. And if you sit down and think about this, and think about the people, the process, and the technology element, there's not a lot you can do on the technology side to prevent this. But you can certainly do two things with people and process. With people, you can alert them. And with process, you can just change your process. If you're aware that this is an issue in the industry, you can simply say, we no longer are going to make payments based on an email without getting some further verification. So there's always that balance in our view between people, process, technology. It varies across um, clients and it varies across industry sectors within financial services. But those who think technology is the only answer are probably wrong. Those who think it's all people are probably wrong. Those who think it's all process are probably wrong. It's a mixture of those three in balance across your organization. George, thank you for speaking with me. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for watching.